Dear members and friends of the American Hellenic Chamber of Commerce, good evening from Athens. On behalf of our chamber, I welcome you all to today's webinar that will analyze and present the markets in the states of Missouri, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts. It is a fact that COVID-19 has left a significant footprint on the worldwide trade sector, and especially in the areas related to catering and hospitality services. In parallel, the continuation of the war in Ukraine in combination with the soaring prices in energy and the rising of inflation has caused a disruption in the supply chain and creates a wider uncertainty as to what the future will bring. At the same time, the usage of communication technologies is shaping a new landscape in consumer attitudes, new trends in the field of trade and in the way supply chains operate. These new data create a new environment, part of which, let us not forget, will continue to exist after the end of the troubled times we are living. In such times and occasions, exploration of new markets is essential to all business. The used market is of rapidly escalating interest for many Greek companies in exploring either to export their products and services or to launch a business entity taking advantage of the numerous incentives that its state, uh, its state provides. Acknowledging that the U.S. is a very large and diverse society, the Chamber and its Trade USA Department, after a series of seminars we conducted the last six years all over Greece, informing potential exporters about the U.S. market in total, we decided to start focusing on certain states and their specific profile and characteristics in order that we provide more in-depth information. Today, we have the third part of the new series of webinars under the title State by State Insight, which we envision that will be very useful to anyone participating in. A fundamental role to the success of these webinars are definitely the experts who participate and will transfer their valuable knowledge to all of us. I want to thank our speakers who accepted our invitation and will take part today. Many thanks to DK Marketing and particularly to Dimitris Karvasilis, who is also our international trade advisor. I also want to thank uh, Athenian Macedonian News Agency as a media partner and Export News as communication sponsor. Finally, my colleague Dina Athanasiu for her work and contrib contribution as head of the Trade USA Department. I will now pass the floor to the President of the American Chamber here, Mr. Nicolas Bacacelos, for his welcome remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. Dear friends and esteemed colleagues, today we're happy to introduce the third part of our State by State Insight series of webinars where experts will share information on industries that are important to Greek business, focusing on the states of Missouri, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts. The strategy, as well the, as the operational planning of the American Hellenic Chamber of Commerce, is focused on supporting and promoting the interests of our members and building meaningful connections within the U.S. market. An important element in supporting Greek export trade with the U.S. has to do with providing guidance to Greek businesses, whether they are active exporters or hope to enter the U.S. market. This is achieved through commitment, expertise, specialized knowledge and continuous market research. The methods we use to collect and share market information while providing valuable advisory are continually adapted to the dynamics of the real economy. This is the mission to which AmCham and its international trade department, Trade USA, are dedicated. Ladies and gentlemen, with a sense of responsibility and focused determination, we face the business and economic developments worldwide, preparing the Greek market for what comes next. We act as a bridge between Greece and the US, shaping from our side those conditions that form a stable and strong partnership between the two countries. We are confident that today's event, as well as a series of follow-up initiatives in the, in the near future by the Chamber and Trade USA, will serve as valuable tools for our export-oriented business community. In closing, my brief remark, remarks, and, and before I pass the floor to Dina Tanasio, I wish to thank the Trade USA team, as well as the, all the speakers, and wish them success in today's event. Most of all, though, I wish to thank everyone who's participating online. I hope the event matches or even exceeds your expectations. And with these thoughts, I'll pass the floor on to you, Dina. 
Thank you, Mr. Bakatelos. Uh, dear esteemed guests and speakers, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening to everyone here in Greece and good morning to all of you in the States who are watching us. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all today. The US market is the largest, most diverse and dynamic market consisting of 300, 3, 325 million consumers and presenting the highest house, household spending globally. However, new entrants need to recognize that every USA state is different and has its own unique profile. To address the need for in-depth information, the American Hellenic Chamber of Commerce and its International Trade Department, Trade USA, introduced a new series of webinars to provide useful insights per state with the aim to assist exporting firms in their business endeavors and contribute to further enhancement of the bilateral trade between Greece and the United States. Our Trade USA State by State Insights webinar kicked off in May 2021, focusing on the states of Texas, California, and New Mexico, while our second webinar was held in September 2021, which analyzed the states of New York, Illinois, and Florida. Today, we proceed with the third event, which will analyze the states of Missouri, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts. The event will begin with a presentation by Mr. Dimitris Karavasilis, who is our International Trade Advisor, CEO of DK Marketing and Idea Monkeys LLC, who will share insights for all three states. This will be followed by presentations and one-on-one -on -one conversations with our esteemed guest speakers. We're extremely honored to have with us today Ms. Natasha Lord, Managing Director in, of the International Trade and Investment Office of the Missouri Department of Economic Development, as well as Professor Stefano Carli from the Medical and, he and Public Health Schools from Harvard University, who will share with us their expertise and present us trade opportunities with the state of Missouri, as well as the Mediterranean diet and the opportunity that arises for our Greek F&B products in the US market respectively. Before moving on, I would like to share a few data regarding the bilateral trade and uh, a few words about who we are and what we do. According to the US Department of Commerce in 2021, the US imported $1.68 billion worth of goods from Greece, while Greece imported $1.56 billion worth of goods from the US. So what about Trade USA? Established in 2013, Trade USA is the International Trade Department of the American Hellenic Chamber of Commerce. Through a multitude of actions and initiatives, it provides invaluable information, insight, support, and guidance to Greek companies seeking to successfully penetrate and or further expand their business operation with the US. Trade USA regularly organizes targeted workshops and seminars for aspiring exporters in cities across Greece and collaboration with local authorities and also provides one-on-one -on -one consulting services, including regulatory compliance with the FDA through our collaboration with the EAS Consulting Group. Through a host of trade missions, exhibitions, B2B meetings, it creates networking opportunities between Greek exporters and US importers, distributors, and buyers. Also, in 2016, Trade USA launched the annual Export USA Forum which is the only forum in Greece focusing slowly on exporting to the US market. Our seventh Export USA Forum will be held this November, so we invite you to stay tuned for more information and updates. Dear participants, I'm wishing you all a fruitful event, and I encourage you to send your questions to our experts through our live chat feature that you can see at the bottom of the, of the screen. Without further ado, Dimitri, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Dina. Uh, I would like to thank you very much and to, have to say uh, good afternoon to our dear uh, friends here in Greece and good morning uh, to our friends in the uh, United States. So um, I'm going to present uh, some uh, consumer insights and some demographics that uh, our uh, uh, market research and consumer uh, already uh, a point in uh, our presentation. So, okay. 
Um, now about uh, we are going first as uh, Dina and uh, Mr. Bacacelos and Mr. Spertunia said that we are going to analyze uh, the state-by-state -state insights in Missouri, in Pennsylvania and Massachusetts. Uh, so let's have first an approach to see uh, what uh, are these uh, states uh, are. The first say uh, about Missouri, um, population is um, something like uh, 6 million uh, plus uh, citizens in 2021 and uh, the most populous city uh, in this state is uh, Kansas City. Um, as we can see here, uh, Kansas City is uh, almost uh, more than half a million uh, citizens and then St. Louis and Springfield. Uh, in Missouri, we have um, uh, the 79% uh, concerning uh, the uh, by race, uh, the, we have right, uh, 79%, the black uh, or African American is the 11%, and then we have the Hispanic uh, Latino, uh, two or more races in the end Asian and other races that are less than 1%. Concerning now the uh, generation, uh, we have to see that uh, most of uh, uh, the population uh, is uh, in millennials, like uh, 25, 44, with more than one and a half million and uh, follows by the Gen X uh, 45, 59 and the baby boomers. Uh, we can see that the Gen Z, that it's 1024, and of course the Gen A 0 to 9, um, it is um, less than 800,000 uh, people. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is the fifth most populous state in the United States with approximately 12.8 million residents. The capital of Pennsylvania is Harrisburg and the largest city in Pennsylvania is uh, Philadelphia with almost 1.6 million residents. Uh, as we can see here, uh, by 2021 uh, data, the latest da data we had is uh, Philadelphia over than 1.5 million citizens, and then it's Pittsburgh uh, with 300,000, uh, almost 300,000 citizens, and then go on with Allentown and uh, the rest uh, uh, cities. Uh, we can see here, uh, that uh, most of the population uh, is in Philadelphia. So we can see, um, and this is a, a very, very important uh, data concerning uh, uh, and insight concerning uh, companies and uh, uh, freelancers or businessmen who want to refer uh, to the state of Pennsylvania that uh, Philadelphia um, is uh, uh, keeping uh, more uh, than 1.5 uh, million citizens. White alone is 76%, and here is uh, like almost Missouri, Black uh, or African American alone is about 11%, and then the Hispanic or Latino and uh, Asian, uh, we can see here that it's 3%. Two or more races, uh, it's double than Missouri in uh, about 2%. Uh, that uh, also Gen A uh, is uh, more than uh, 1.4 uh, million. Gen Z and of course millennials and Gen X uh, and baby boomers. This is the most, uh, uh, let's say, um, target group. Uh, most of com companies uh, and uh, business services companies uh, focus on. Uh, so we can see if we add them, it's uh, more than uh, nine uh, million, uh, eight to nine million um, citizens. Uh, now, Massachusetts uh, is the seventh smallest 
state in the United States, a very small uh, state with a total population uh, of uh, in 2021 that uh, was estimated on uh, 6.8 uh, million uh, people. And the capital city of Massachusetts is Boston, which is the largest city with um, less than 700,000 residents. Uh, here we can see again that Boston um, keeps uh, the most uh, uh, citizens uh, in uh, the city, like uh, seven less than 700,000 uh, people, and then uh, follows the Worcester with 185, and then Springfield, Cambridge, and lower. Uh, Again, here we have the white alone is uh, 71%, the Hispanic or Latino 12%, Black or African American 7%, but we can see uh, the difference that here uh, Black or African uh, American and the Asian alone, we can see uh, that they have divided and Asian are um, a lot of, uh, they have a big uh, share, let's say, in uh, the pie by race uh, in Massachusetts. Um, again, here we can see Gen Z, uh, millennials and Gen X, and baby boomers that they keep uh, the most uh, uh, important part of uh, the uh, focus on business and services because they are uh, the most than uh, 60, 70 percent. Uh, of the total population. Now let's take a look about the economy of these states. Uh, Missouri, uh, gross state product in 2021 was uh, less than 300 billion uh, US dollars with a total growth of 6% since 2015. Um, we can see here uh, how it was the gross state product. Uh, in 2015 to 79 uh, billion and uh, 2020 of course we had uh, 2019 2020 we had the, the covid uh, pandemic and the crisis and then uh, we see that uh, in 2021 uh, we have um, a very big uh, increase uh, in uh, and uh, more uh, than uh, 2019. So we can see uh, that we have a, a very a strong comeback uh, since uh, 2019. Um, why is that? Because Missouri's economy rests uh, chiefly on industry. And as we know, and uh, all, uh, and Mr. Spertunia said uh, in his uh, introduction, uh, a lot of, uh, there was a very big disruption all over the world concerning uh, the uh, uh, production, concerning uh, the value chain, uh, concerning the distribution channels. So uh, we uh, can see that, uh, I mean, all the states and especially United States, that they, they were importing a lot of products abroad. Now they had uh, to increase their production in order uh, to satisfy the demand um, of products uh, in uh, the country. Uh, so, and because Missouri's economy rests uh, in uh, the industry, uh, that helped really a lot uh, in having a strong comeback. Uh, St. Louis is an important uh, center for the manufacture of metals and chemicals. And um, we can easily can understand that uh, metals and especially chemicals uh, during COVID uh, was, uh, uh, let's say, in uh, uh, maybe it was the top of uh, in ranking of the products that was in highly uh, demand. Um, the GDP is composed by the following uh, sectors. We can see manufacturing, um, real estate, uh, healthcare, uh, finance and insurance. Uh, and uh, after that, we can see that even with professional, scientific and technical services, so we can see a lot of services here, plus 
uh, the rental and leasing, we can see that there are a lot of uh, um, there, uh, there are a lot of services that uh, is providing, and GDP has a lot of services uh, included. Uh, the same is about wholesale trade and retail trade, and of course we have the information, we have uh, the construction and transportation and warehousing. The sectors with the largest employers. Uh, first is the healthcare and social assistance, then it's retail trade, and uh, then manufacturing, accommodation and food services, and professional, scientific and technical services, and then goes the, the, the rest. Uh, now concerning the disposable personal income of Missouri between 15 to 2021, 20, we can see that uh, uh, definitely after uh, 2018, 2019, the, uh, even if it was expected uh, to have a decrease, we can see uh, that it is still uh, going up and increasing uh, in spite the crisis of, uh, um, of COVID and uh, pandemic. And uh, this has to do, as we said in the beginning, first because of the manufacturing and the second, uh, because of uh, the services and health services, uh, that it was really highly demanded all this uh, uh, period. Um, the same was about per capita uh, disposable personal income, uh, that uh, we can see that um, in spite of this period, it was uh, in an increase uh, mode. Uh, final, the total expenditures, uh, we can see here that it was after 19 here in COVID, uh, we had as everywhere in the world, worldwide, uh, we have uh, said this a lot of times that uh, maybe e-commerce was rise really uh, high and uh, there was new distribution uh, channels and new ways of purchasing things. But finally, we can see that uh, the total expenditures um, is, uh, was, were decreasing. The same is happening in Missouri. Now, about Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has the sixth biggest economy in the U.S. and uh, uh, is home to close to 50 of the 1,000 largest public and private companies in the U.S. by sales. Uh, in 2021, the gross domestic product uh, was about uh, more than 700 billion uh, U.S. dollars. Um, the gross uh, product, uh, again here, we can see that it was a very, very... Um, uh, it, it was pressed a lot on 2020, and then uh, we see that almost recovered on 2021. Um, and a, a very uh, important, uh, important. Uh, it's a consumer insight, like a trade secret here, is that the state is the largest producer among the 50 states in canned fruit, vegetables, specialty products, chocolate cocoa products, potato chips, and pretzels. So it's known as the snack food capital of the world. Uh, so you can imagine and you can understand that um, it is a trend leader uh, concerning the snack industry uh, worldwide. Uh, here we can uh, take a look about the sector. Uh, that uh, was most uh, contribute to the GDP. We can see the manufacture, the real estate, manufacturing, healthcare, professional, and the rest. Um, so about the disposable uh, uh, personal income, you can see that uh, there is, uh, of course, an increasing trend uh, without having any effects from, from the COVID. Uh, the same is happening uh, here as we can see per capita. Uh, we can uh, uh, actually see that there is uh, a disposable income to be consumed. Uh, and uh, also about the expenditure, it follows the model that we described before. Massachusetts is a global leader in biotechnology, engineering, 
higher education, finance and maritime trade. Um, of course, uh, the universities and uh, we are going to have um, the honor uh, to discuss later on with uh, Professor uh, Carlos uh, uh, Stefanos, dear and friend Stefanos, that uh, he will describe us a little bit better because he lives there. Uh, and uh, we can see that uh, again here we had uh, on uh, 2020, um, we had uh, the gross state product uh, decreases. Uh, uh, during uh, the COVID. Uh, the sector that contributes, of course, it was the professional, scientific and technical services after the real estate, finance and insurance, uh, less the manufacturing, healthcare, and then the rest. Um, business in Massachusetts employed a total of 24.2 million in 2018. Unfortunately, we couldn't find the uh, uh, latest uh, data, and uh, they uh, more uh, they occupied in uh, healthcare and social assistance. Then it's professional, scientific, and technical services, and then it is the rest uh, categories uh, as we have described uh, before. Uh, again, here about the disposable personal income, uh, we can see that uh, it is really high. It is more than 70, less than 70,000 um, US dollars. So we see that uh, in general, there is a, a disposable income to be spent and uh, to be consumed. Uh, again, the, the model, in order not to repeat all the time, uh, for decreasing during the expense. Uh, by country, we can see that the partners, uh, the bilateral, let's say, partner of uh, these three states, first of all, about Missouri, um, China is the biggest uh, uh, exporter to Missouri, then it's Canada, Germany, France, and uh, then uh, it comes Japan, Taiwan, uh, India, and Vietnam. Um, and uh, the main imported products, uh, we can see that it's mineral fuels, mineral oils, and products of their distillation concerning to HS harmonized system uh, codes. Uh, we can see that um, they are importing most of it, some material uh, concerning the raw material uh, that all has to do with the manufacturing and uh, uh, in production and industrial production. Um, of course, uh, from Greece, tubes, pipes and refined copper is uh, the biggest, uh, uh, let's say it contributes most in uh, uh, Missouri's uh, exports from Greece, fruits and nuts, aluminum foil, peaches, and then comes uh, the aluminum alloy, woven fabrics, uh, tanks, casks, uh, and as we can see, uh, olives and prepared or preserved uh, are, uh, let's say, um, uh, the last in this uh, ranking. So we can see that it's a mixed uh, situation between industrial and raw materials, uh, industrial stuff, uh, uh, raw materials, and of course, uh, some great agricultural products. Uh, in Pennsylvania, again, China is the biggest one uh, importer. Uh, China is the biggest uh, exporter. Uh, Switzerland, South uh, Korea, Germany, Russia, UK, Ireland, and Brazil. And um, the imported products uh, was pharmaceutical, uh, most of it. Uh, then again, it's some industrial and the meat and the edible meat. Uh, and some other uh, stuff is just uh, in uh, the lower uh, ranking. Um, concerning uh, Greece, they were getting petroleum bitumen uh, is uh, the biggest uh, export uh, HS uh, code product. And then it's kiwi fruit, 
uh, then it's uh, Portland wax uh, and uh, malt extract for food products or flour, meal, olive oil, olives, Pacific salmon and vegetables. Um, concerning Canada is the first exporter uh, in, uh, uh, in Massachusetts, uh, in the state, Ireland, uh, China is in the third position, Germany, UK, Japan, Netherlands and Switzerland. Um, we can actually uh, see here that mineral fuels, optical, nuclear, electrical, vehicles, uh, aircraft, plastics uh, are the biggest one and only beverages and some fish and uh, crustaceans uh, has to do uh, with uh, F&B. And uh, from Greece, uh, the biggest part uh, of it uh, is uh, olives and olive oil, it's wine. Uh, here we have some parts of accessories of military weapons, aluminum alloy, tubes, food preparation, and uh, some aluminum fold and bread, pastry cakes, uh, uh, and similar baked products. Uh, let's take a quick view also in uh, the restaurant uh, business. So we have here in Missouri, there are uh, 11,200 eating and drinking places in 2018. Uh, of course, today we have a decrease of uh, more than um, 20 to 22%. Uh, we have the honor to discuss later on with Natasha Lord uh, in order to give us uh, maybe the latest uh, data and uh, the perception of what is going on in this uh, field and in this industry. Business in the beverage and food industry employ a total of over 300,000 uh, employees. And the estimated sales in 2018 in Missouri were about 11.7 billion. Uh, the rest uh, in Pennsylvania, the restaurant industry is an important force. Um, According to our data on 2018, it was more than 26,000 uh, food service location, and the jobs were about uh, five. Uh, uh, it was 15,000, more than 15,000, and uh, uh, 350,000 almost the jobs and uh, the service jobs in uh, food service construction. In Missouri, uh, construction industry contributed uh, the 3.7 percent of the state in about uh, 332.1 billion in 2019. Um, and we have here 7.2 million workers in July 22, and there was a decrease of um, uh, 4.1 percent from July 19 and 6.6 .6 less than April when U.S. construction employment peaked. Um, also, we can see here that there are some largest construction company by sales and revenue. Uh, you can take a, a, a more, you can study this uh, presentation that will be uploaded in the website of uh, AmCham and Trade USA. Uh, after this uh, webinar, so you can uh, have a, a more careful uh, look about uh, the uh, data. In Pennsylvania, non-residential construction was 12.3 uh, billion in 29 and 4.6 billion the residential construction. And the number of building permits, uh, it was about more than 22,000. Uh, which represented a minus 2.1 decline over uh, the period uh, 2014 to 2019. Again, here we have some uh, companies. In Massachusetts, uh, we can see that uh, uh, the buildings and construction were more than 36,000 of persons. According to the United States Federal uh, Reverse, again, here are some 
uh, some some data. And uh, now about leading uh, publicity uh, and trade companies in Missouri, uh, we can we have here ranked by revenue uh, also some uh, data in Pennsylvania the same and in Massachusetts uh, you can see uh, some uh, really big uh, brands like General Electric and some other uh, companies like Liberty Insurance. So I would like to thank you very much for your um, uh, for, for, for your uh, joining uh, with us and uh, I would like to, to call now uh, Miss uh, Natasha Lord, that she is uh, the director, hi Natasha, uh, the director of uh, Missouri International Trade and Investment Office. Uh, and um, Natasha, the floor is yours, and after we can uh, discuss uh, uh, some issues of uh, your and our presentations in order to give a better, clear view to our. Um, uh, people that join this uh, webinar. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Absolutely. Hello. Good evening. First of all, thank you, um, Demetrius, Elias, Nikos, and Dina um, for our partnership. You guys are always such a pleasure to work with and thank all of you for taking your time out to join us today. Um, today, I've been asked to share with you a little bit more about the state of Missouri. So who we are historically, geographically, and economically, um, as well as kind of talk through um, our international connections, as well as the key sectors here in the state of Missouri. Most valuable to the conversation, I'll provide an overview of the economy and opportunities um, from a bilateral trade and investment perspective. Um, the overview will hopefully lead to conversations that extend beyond our time together today. So similar to the International Division of the Hellenic Chamber, um, we share a common mission in that we are aiming to strengthen our economies by increasing trade and facilitating investment. Specifically, we work with Missouri-based businesses and assist them in growing their international business strategy and identifying partners abroad. Furthermore, we work with foreign businesses in coordination with the Missouri Partnership with the goal of not only promoting the assets of the state of Missouri, but also extremely important to us is to offer ourselves as your partners in the Midwest. So just to jump right in, um, from a historical perspective, Missouri has been at the center of culture um, as well as trading in North America. So since uh, 1000 BC, St. Louis was the center of a Native American Mississippian culture at Cahokia, which was an empire that stretched from the Great Lakes of, to the Gulf of Mexico. And then in 1750s, the first Europeans arrived um, from France, and you may have also heard of St. Louis and Missouri referred to as the gateway to the West. And with both the Missouri and Mississippi rivers running through and alongside the Missouri, the border, the Missouri um, has long been a center of, of trading. So some other things to kind of know about Missouri as we begin this conversation, we're a core state within the Midwest. So you'll hear me talk uh, more throughout the presentation about location, but some significant logistical resources that we have here think uh, rail rivers and roads. So each class one uh, railway runs through Missouri. Um, and we're generally known for um, being hardworking, uh, pulling up uh, the bootstraps and getting to work, affordable housing, um, cost, is living, cost of living, as well as just being an extremely uh, business friendly state. So you heard me just mention Missouri has a central location within the Midwest and North America. So that allows um, easy reach to market and to customers. So via our international airports, um, extensive river barge, or any of those class one railroads that I just mentioned that all run through our state. So just to give you an idea of exactly what that means for Missouri, you can reach um, more than half of the continental US um, in less than a day's drive um, with most other states reachable in less than two. So Demetrius mentioned some of this information, but just wanna highlight that Missouri has a population of 6.1 million um, made up of our two metro cities on the Eastern and Western borders in St. Louis and Kansas City. But we also have a number of mid-sized cities located across the state, as well as um, what we may be more known for our farmland as and rural areas across the state as well. Um, the state of Missouri has a GDP of 300 
$29 billion. And in 2021, it exported $15.5 billion worth of goods um, and services worldwide. And I'll touch here in a bit, just a little bit more on what that means specifically for Greek Missouri connections. So when you take a look at our business climate in general, we've always had an incredible history of financial stability. Um, in 2021, according to the Tax Foundation, we had the third best corporate tax index um, and the eighth best property um, tax index. We were one of only 12 states to receive the highest bond rating, um, and we've had maintained that for more than 50 years. Um, generally, Missouri is known for our predictability and taxation, um, and we are home to a Fortune 500 companies headquartered in Missouri, which include um, Centene, Emerson, O'Reilly, Edward Jones, um, Cerner, and many more. So just wanted to touch here briefly on taxes and incentives. So Missouri works hard to ensure that we have um, one of the most business friendly um, regulatory and tax environments in the United States. So you heard me mention a four point uh, a four percent corporate income tax. So that's the second lowest corporate tax rate amongst states that have that tax. Um, additionally, as far as kind of our incentive programs, Missouri works as our Missouri Works is our biggest incentive program, and it's designed to reward companies that create jobs by allowing the state by allowing you to keep state withholding taxes, along with other additional benefits. Um, and we have a number of other benefits, um, including infrastructure funding, tax abatements, tax exemptions, um, automotive and manufacturing incentives, as well as opportunity zones and more. And then you heard me mention it, um, but Missouri is, is extremely fiscally safe, stable and responsible. So we are constitutionally required to have a balanced budget, which has allowed us to hold that AAA bond rating for more than 50 years. So here, just to speak a little bit more to um, exports and imports in general. Um, so in 2021, Missouri exported a, a total of $15.5 billion um, worth of goods the top countries that we exported to were Canada, Mexico, China, Germany, and Japan. And then likewise, in 2021, Missouri imported $24.6 billion um, worth of goods. So I wanted to speak a little bit more again, specifically to the Greek Missouri connections. Um, specific as it per pertains to that, you can see on the slide there that in 2021, Missouri exported 12. percent $1 million worth of goods to Greece, and likewise, Missouri imported $2 million um, worth of goods from Greece. Um, furthermore, just wanted to highlight on a couple of our other connections. So in terms of um, Missouri in itself, um, 1,100 Missourians were born in Greece, and then approximately 14,000 um, Missourians have indicated that they do have Greek ancestry. Furthermore, interesting is that approximately 1,700 Missourians speak Greek, um, and then four of our higher ed um, institutions offer Greek language programs as well. So um, just wanted to show you this slide here just to show that the state of Missouri is globally minded. We have 15 offices around the world, again, that assist Missouri-based businesses in increasing their sales, but likewise, um, we look to assist foreign companies in understanding the benefits and the assets of the state of Missouri. Um, and as you will note on the slide there, we have three physical office locations in Europe that serve the entirety of the European Union that are available to assist you and your company as you're evaluating the American market. Just wanted to show you this, and, and you, you may be um, kind of curious about this slide here. So although it's certainly my job every day, and especially this evening, to explain to you the benefits of the state of Missouri, I would be remiss to not mention the benefits to you as a location again. So we're strategically located within North America in the United States, but furthermore, we happen to sit at the center of the Midwest region. So you'll see there on the map, the cities highlighted. So the cities that are indicated on the map are those that have a population greater than 1 million. Um, and these states are working together on a number of topics, um, such as the Midwest EV Charging Corridor Coalition. Um, to provide a bit further perspective on just why that matters, why it matters that uh, Missouri's you know, located in the middle of the Midwest, 
So if you look at that grouping of states, it has a population of uh, 68 million or one fifth of the entire U.S. population lives within the Midwest region. So it, it's not one to be ignored. This is similar in size to the populations of Britain or France. Um, collectively, the Midwest also has a GDP of approximately four trillion U.S. dollars, which would rank it next to Germany as the world's fourth largest. And manufacturing. So manufacturing happens here in the heart of America. Across the Midwest, uh, manufacturing uh, makes up about 9.5 to 17 percent of gross state product, um, whereas the remaining states outside of the Midwest, that average is 8.5 percent. Um, as far as a skilled workforce and the research going on here, 16 of the top 50 U.S. medical schools are also located um, in the Midwest. So over the course of the next couple of slides, um, I'm going to highlight on our on our Missouri opportunities and strength sectors. So beginning with one of our arguably most important sectors, which is aerospace and defense. So companies like Boeing are building the F-A-18, the F-15 and the TX trainer fighter jets, um, the new unmanned MQ-25 refueling drone and many more right here in the state of Missouri. As far as manufacturing, you've heard me mention it, but we have some of the lowest taxes and energy rates um, in the country. <clears throat> so that really allows Missouri to, uh, to kind of sit in a unique position um, in terms of manufacturing. We have access to both coasts um, as well as markets in Canada and Mexico, again, due to that central uh, location. Missouri has nearly 6,500 manufacturing um, firms across the state that employ more than 275,000 um, employees, uh, which makes up approximately 11.4% of the state's total employment. Um, just notably, Missouri produced nearly 600,000 vehicles from Ford and GM within the state in 2020. Um, and then we've got Ag tech. So we are home to the largest concentration of plant science PhDs in the world, the Animal Health Corridor, and an $88 billion ag industry. Um, I'd also just like to note that on the research and development side, um, the Donald Danforth Plant Center Science Center is the world's largest independent research center focused on plant science, and that is located right here in the state of Missouri. You can see here um, on the slide, I mentioned the $88 billion ag industry and combined uh, with our distribution network. Um, you can see here on the slide the likes of Anheuser-Busch, but we also have a number of smaller companies that are operating in the food solutions space. When we look at the financial services, we're home to one of the largest concentrations of financial security brokerage firms outside of New York. Um, and we're the birthplace of companies like H&R Block um, and many more. Health innovation was another one that I wanted to highlight on this evening. So our companies are leaders in pure human and animal health research. Um, and then we've got patient and data and patient connection through the innovation of companies like Cerner, Centene, and Express Scripts. And I won't uh, belabor this point anymore, um, as I've kind of mentioned this throughout the presentation, but our ability to get goods anywhere efficiently and economically um, is pretty unmatched. So we've got all the class one railroads that do um, make their way through Missouri, as well as the Mississippi and Missouri rivers. And then furthermore, um, some just a few of the other sectors that I would like to highlight on specifically here is the geospatial sector. So in 2016, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency announced St. Louis as its new Western Regional Headquarters. Um, that is a $1.7 trillion investment. And furthermore, by September, um, the NGA will be opening a sensitive compartmented information facility. And this is one of the only, or this is the only um, location of that sorts outside of Washington, DC. Another uh, sector that I just wanted to make sure to kind of uh, mention again this evening is 
the animal health sector. So the animal health corridor is something that uh, sits right in the heart of Missouri. And essentially it's made up of 300 companies in the animal health space, um, which make up those 300 manufacturers make up 75% of worldwide sales in the animal health industry. And then I know I've made mention of this as well a few times throughout this evening's presentation, but just wanted to mention again, some of the innovative companies located across our state, such as Centene Cerner, Edward Jones, H&R Block, um, Bass Pro Shops, Hallmark, um, Boeing's Defense, um, and as well as Express Scripts amongst many others. Um, and also important to note in this conversation today is that um, Currently, we have more than 450 companies in Missouri that are foreign owned and are growing within our innovative business environment. <clears throat> Again, um, just wanted to mention the sectors of opportunity, aerospace and defense that I mentioned today, food solutions, geospatial animal health, um, as well as just in general, the location our location within North America, uh, making the state of Missouri um, a friendly place to do business. Aside from that, um, I will go ahead. I've come to the end of my presentation and just wanna say thank you, both from a trade and investment perspective. Missouri is a state that, you can, that can be considered in regards to suiting your business needs, as well as allowing opportunities for partnerships. And with that, thank you for your time and attention today. And I'll hand it back to you, Demetrius, for the next portion of the program. I'm so sorry, it was unmuting, okay. uh, the technology. So um, thank you very much, Natasha, uh, for your presentation. Uh, we enjoyed it really a lot. And I would like to address you as uh, one question in the beginning. And uh, according to your opinion, how is Greece and Greek entrepreneurs uh, perceived in the Missouri states and business community. Yeah, no, thank you, Demetrius. That's a fantastic question. And I think this is a difficult question to answer and by no means um, reflective of, of all. I think in general, our knowledge of Greek uh, manufacturing and entrepreneurship is generally limited, which is, of course, kind of an opportunity from a marketing perspective. So the first things that come to mind for most are probably a country that's a beautiful tourist destination um, as well as um, you know very strong in the foods and I would say that many Americans think of Greece from a historical perspective so hard-working um, foundation of Western civilization and democracy so I've I've encountered that um, again this is just a, a generalization that Americans don't have um, any sort of negative view of Greece, it's just one um, that is, is incomplete. And again, I think this makes for a, a fantastic opportunity in that space. Thank you. Uh, what about, uh, are you, um, according uh, again to, to, to your experience, um, if, uh, let's say, uh, Greek uh, companies or entrepreneurs or some freelancers would like to invest in expanding their business operation in in Missouri State. So I'm uh, knocking the door of your office and uh, I'm there and I would like uh, for you to tell me is there any opportunities for, for green companies there uh, or we will have, uh, you know, some uh, barriers or some uh, uh, difficulties. So, Demetrius, I'm not sure if I caught the whole bit. So, for a Greek company that would be interested in expanding within the state of Missouri. So, I'll mm -hmm. say that at the moment, um, I'm not aware of any Greek companies that are operating in, in this space. But again, I think that's an, an opportunity. So, opportunities like trade shows and, and trade missions. Um, additionally, the state of Missouri will be at, at Select USA, and we'd be happy to connect there. Um, and we'll plan to exhibit and attend again the DeFea Defense Exhibition that's going to take place in Athens um, next May 23. 
Um, again, our office as well as the Missouri Partnership um, will be happy to work hand in hand with any Greek companies that are considering the Midwest and specifically Missouri as a part of, of their expansion. Um, within North America. I am aware of two Missouri companies um, that are operating in Greece, and those companies are Enterprising Holdings and um, Leggett and Platt, which is a, a manufacturer of mattress springs. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, let's uh, finalize, uh, let's uh, conclude. And I would like uh, to ask you a personal question. Are you familiar with any Greek products? Uh, that are available at the, any grocery store that uh, you visit uh, there uh, in your city? Yeah, no, this is a, a fantastic question to round out on. So, yes. So, even though I could unfortunately not answer yes to that last question, Demetrius, I can ensure you that um, we enjoy Greek food. So, I'm familiar with many Greek products, so mainly food products. Um, a large assortment of which are available at our specialty grocery stores. So if you think um, in our large metros, of course, we've got some international um, and specialty grocery stores, think snacks, but also available in many just neighborhood grocery stores are products such as, you know, cheeses, the feta, the halloumi, um, honey, yogurts, and baklava, kind of amongst others. So yes, I can assure you that we do have uh, Greek products available um, at our at our grocery stores here in Missouri. And do you believe that they help in your health? I mean, uh, you believe that they have a health claim and uh, you are, uh, let's say, uh, you, you are ready in order to, to keep and uh, to pay more uh, because they are, uh, let's say, more value uh, products. Yes, no, absolutely, 100%, Demetrius. So I think um, a lot of, of these types of foods, specialty foods, they are foods that um, one would be willing to pay a markup on. So when I think about those foods I just mentioned, um, certainly that comes into play. Uh, so, Natasha, I would like to thank you really a lot. And uh, with uh, your last uh, answer, uh, I would like to pass uh, the floor to Mr. Professor uh, Callas. Uh, so, Stefanos, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Stefanos, uh, uh, that he's uh, from uh, Harvard School. Uh, and um, uh, he's gonna uh, introduce us in this uh, initiative and uh, uh, the question that I asked to Natasha Stefanos uh, right now. Uh, it was a kind of a link in order to give you the floor and tell us uh, uh, about all this uh, beautiful and really nice uh, initiative that uh, it takes uh, place uh, through um, uh, yourself and uh, all your team in Harvard University. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you for an excellent uh, segue, Dimitris. Uh, it's a perfect segue. Uh, I also want to thank Elias and uh, Dina and the Chamber for the invite and the opportunity to speak to all of you about uh, food and beverage opportunities in the US for Greek companies uh, within the context of the Mediterranean diet. Let me, can you see my screen? Can someone tell me if we see the uh, the slides? I can't see the chat with the slides open. If you can just tell me if you see it, yes or no. Yes, Professor. You, you see the slides? Yes, we see, we we could see before the okay. entire screen. All yes, right. perfect. 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 everything's perfect. Thank you very much. All right. 
Thank you. First time on StreamYard. So, okay. So first of all, I think you're starting from an advantageous standpoint that uh, expert panels, which are convened every year, you can see here US News and World Report, very well-known magazine. Uh, these are experts, some of them from Harvard, but not myself, and uh, from many universities, both physicians, nutritionists, uh, experts in psychology, obesity, diabetes, etc. They rank 40 or more diets every year, and you can see for the last five years that they have chosen the Mediterranean diet as number one, as being overall the most healthy diet, the easiest to follow, and uh, best for many specific conditions. Moreover, the United States government, so the first rating is, is private, but the United States government through the U.S. Department of Agriculture, every five years they create dietary guidelines for all Americans. And both in 2015 and in 2020, they specifically recognize Mediterranean diet as a healthy option for all Americans. Of course, today's number one diet is based on ancient Greek traditions, metron ariston, all things in moderation, uh, rich in olive oil, fruits, vegetables, fish, and wine. We see reductions for those people following the Mediterranean diet closely. We see reductions in heart disease of 20 to 45 percent, cancer 20 to 30 percent, depression 15 to 30 percent, many intermediate metabolic conditions like metabolic syndrome, diabetes mellitus, hypertension. We see a decrease in things like Alzheimer's, other forms of dementia, and generally in cognitive decline. For those people who aren't necessarily interested in being more healthy, they can improve their sexual function and their sleep. And we see an increase in lifespan or longevity. Of course, Greece's connection to the term and the concept of Mediterranean diet is not just ancient, but the actual origin of the term Mediterranean diet comes from Ansel Keys, who was an American who conducted the seven country study. And without going through all the details of the study, he involved populations post-World War II from seven different countries, including populations in Greece specifically Corfu and Crete. And we can see here that Greece did the best of all the countries in having the lowest rates of coronary heart disease. And in further follow-up from Dr. Willett from our school, published in the 90s, Greece had the longest life expectancy compared even to the US and Japan, the lowest rate of heart disease and the lowest rates of cancer. So the connections are real. And basically when other people say Mediterranean diet, what they really mean is a traditional Greek diet, the one that our grandparents, Papus and, and Yaya followed. Some general statistics from uh, Technomic based here in the US on consumer surveys and brand ratings. We can see that if Mediterranean diet is the number one diet for health, Health is also a very important criterion for Americans when they select restaurants. So more than 60% of people, more than 74% of millennials, and more than 70% of minority groups. If we look specifically at American attitudes towards Greek cuisine, we can see that 73% of consumers are open to Greek food, meaning 29% have not tried it, but it, they would like to try it or it sounds good to try it. And 44% have tried it and they like it and they find it unique and or exciting. And here we see some examples of fast food like concepts, but involving uh, Greek themes and Greek foods like Greek Mediterranean grill, Euroville, Greek fresh grill, Pita Mediterranean here in Boston, Euro City, and Zo Greek are very popular along with many other uh, brands. 
Another big area of opportunity is the university or college dining sector. Dimitris mentioned that uh, we have many universities and institutions of higher learning. One of them are our state university is University of Massachusetts. And the dining service there is led by a gentleman you see on the left, his name is Ken Tung. He's originally from Hong Kong, but he is a major proponent of Greek food. Uh, he's an advisory member to the Hellenic Center for Excellence in Health and Wellness. And as you can see, he's written up here in a Greek newspaper that he has responsibility for 50,000 meals a day. And he's using tons of Greek olive oil. He's using beans from the Agrino company, uh, Lavraki or Sibrim from the island of Kefalonia, and many, many other Greek products. And he's extremely successful. So the Princeton Review, they rank medical schools, they rank universities. They have ranked his food service as the number one campus food in the U.S. five years in a row. And just to give you an idea how that translates, usually when parents visit their children at a university, they take them out to dinner in the town. At UMass, the students take their parents to Ken's cafeteria to try his food. So, And there are many other people like Ken at Yale, Notre Dame, Northeastern here in Boston, uh, many success stories. So big opportunity for Greek products. Regarding the Hellenic Center for Excellence in Health and Wellness, uh, this is being established in collaboration with the Greek hotel chain, Greek Hotel. Uh, last month in May, I had the privilege of announcing the uh, center, its goals and first steps at the Vatican's Pontifical Academy of Sciences which held a uh, closed seminar on olive oil and Mediterranean diet. Basically, the center will operate as a nonprofit in the US. It will conduct continuing professional education, but at all levels, not just physicians and nutritionists, but also of chefs, persons in the hotel and tourism industry, and persons in the food and beverage in industry, undergraduate students, and many others. In the second phase, we will incorporate wellness and medical tourism. There will be farm stores, including e-stores, in addition to olive oil, wineries, wine cellars, and wine education. As I mentioned, in order to create an instant infrastructure, I've signed a memorandum of agreement with Greg Hotel. This allows us a very large infrastructure already in Crete. As you know, the, inf the, the epicenter of Greg Hotel's operations are in Crete, but it also offers us flexibility. Greg Hotel has 40 hotels in 12 top Greek destinations. So we have the flexibility and availability to conduct educational and immersion programs in various locations throughout Greece. Immediately following the conference in the Vatican as a proof of concept, if you will, we brought a VIP group of about 15 professors and high ranking officials from US universities, Greek universities, Spanish universities, and uh, under the auspices of the region of Crete, the Ministry of Tourism of Greece, the Greek National Tourism Organization, and the private tour operators of Greece, of Crete, we hosted them for a four to five day experience in Crete, both in Heraklio and Rethymno. Without giving you all the details, uh, the professors categorized this as a once in a lifetime experience. The head of our nutrition department, who has been a native of China studying nutrition at Harvard and other universities for more than 30 years, said after all his professional experience, but now with hands-on experience, only now I understand why the Cretan lifestyle and traditional Greek diet led to superior health and longevity results. Here on the left, you can see the professors were being introduced to monastic or, or fasting cuisine. We see the famous uh, professor Antonia Trichopoulou on the right bottom and the visit on the right to the Agreco farm, which is an organic farm operated by Greco Hotel. 
Uh, this visit was widely covered by the press, particularly in Crete, but also two days ago, this was featured in the travel section of Cafe Merini, uh, of course, is Greece's uh, flagship newspaper. And we can see a uh, very enthusiastic uh, coverage by the travel writer, Miss uh, Isabella Zabetaki, about how Cretans know about Kalizoe and Doefzin. Uh, I believe our initiative meshes extremely well with EOT or GNTO's uh, initiative of the Greece of the Good Life or Ielada to Efzin. It also meshes very, very well with the Ministry of Tourism and EOT's goals to lengthen the touristic season and eventually reach the goal of 365 per year tourism in Greece. So in summary, our center will be based in Crete, but in Crete, but with flexibility throughout Greece. We will use the traditions and history of Crete as a reference point for both education as well as research. The center's goals are to couple educational offerings, again, at all levels, from doctors to hotels and food and beverage, but couple the educational offerings with hands-on immersion experiences such that the visitors will see they will hear, they will taste, they will try experiences, they will taste some more, and they will live up close and personal, unique and unforgettable experiences in Crete, which are inspired by the beautiful land, the hospitable people and the rich history. So in conclusion, our first inaugural conference will take place in November, again, uh, meshing with the purposes of prolonging the touristic season. Normally, uh, the Creta Palace of Greek Hotel is closing at the end of October. will remain open through at least the 11th to accommodate our conference. You see the beautiful hotel facilities on the left. And on the right, you see some of the scenes from the organic farm Agreco, which is located five minutes away from the hotel. So we look forward to welcoming you all then, and hopefully the chamber along with others will sponsor a workshop for the food and beverage industry in Greece that's looking to do business with the US and we can provide you among our advisors, a lot of expert uh, input. The advisory board is not just uh, doctors and nutritionists, but also business people and people involved with innovation and people involved with uh, the agro-culinary word, or as we say in Greece, the agro in praxis. So thank you for your attention. And uh, I look forward to any questions you may have. Uh, Stephanos, uh, thank you very, very much for uh, your presentation. And uh, I hope that uh, everybody now understood uh, exactly uh, how uh, how big and how wide uh, is all this issue for nutrition. Uh, it doesn't. It's it's not about food. Uh, it's uh, about the whole culture, the philosophy, uh, the ways of production, the love, um, and uh, the dedication and everything, everything uh, concerns that uh, something comes to our uh, table and our fork is, is, is in the uh, United States. And uh, I hope that uh, this will be uh, one of our unique value points because I can assure you that as a marketeer, um, every time we are trying to say that we have a really quality product, a very quality product, uh, overvalued product, uh, or valued product from, uh, from Greece, but um, we don't have uh, the elements to identify and, uh, uh, let's say, to, to uh, appoint exactly what are these elements? So I believe that uh, all this experience, because food is an experience, uh, I can tell you for sure this. Uh, and 
Uh, I would like to ask uh, about um, what is your opinion, how all these uh, professors, professionals and uh, all this community um, engage to this uh, idea and um, what is the, the uh, let's say, the vision? Uh, I mean, uh, where, uh, what is your vision for the next two or three years uh, as we have imagined it or planned it, let's say, better? Yes. So, uh, the immediate vision is, of course, the, the inaugural conference in November. But as I mentioned, the next phase will involve uh, medical tourism and wellness. And uh, I believe there are some synergies with other groups in Greece that we can work on and also perhaps some favorable changes to legislature in Greece to allow uh, hotels to provide such services. Uh, as a physician, I believe that medical tourism should not be just people seeking uh, an operation in a country which has a cheaper price, but this should be a service uh, also for people who are looking for wellness, they're looking for well-being, and I think Greece is a perfect destination, and as you say, it's not just about food, it's about the whole way of life, and uh, this goes back, you know, the Greeks had an uh, idea of this since ancient times. Hippocrates actually taught that medicine should be divided into three branches. And uh, one was, of course, physics, which translate roughly to internal medicine or pathologia in, in Greek. And the second being surgery, which we all understand. But the third was dieta. And of course, in English, this dieta has become the word diet, but in ancient Greek, dieta was, was what you say, was the whole thing, was the whole way of life. And uh, we also have the ancient concept of the AFZ. So the vision is to, in parallel with our immediate projects and priorities, to, to establish the nonprofit entity in the U.S., it's very important that uh, for the professors who are involved, whether they're U.S. or foreign based, that the organization functions without uh, obvious commercial bias or any kind of implicit commercial bias. At the same time, it's important for us to pursue goals such as collaboration with Greek and other Mediterranean institutions and universities in order to carry out not just educational programs, but research on various levels, research, not just for health, but at the level, health, but at the level of agricultural, uh, improving the, the quality of food in schools, hotels, hospitals, and other institutions. And uh, again, cooperating with other universities and institutions for interchange programs to give them a higher quality of experience. I think it's the, Greece provides, you know, real hands-on experiences Many of us have seen the, the recent video of uh, promotional from Ayot with a, a man from Austria who he visited Greece and he decides to stay there. You know, he never leaves. So this is, this is the kind of experience we're trying to capture. I think, uh, as you saw from the quotes of my colleagues, that they said it was, you know, monadiki birias is a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, even myself, who I've been to Greece, uh, you know, every year and many times every year and experiencing these types of things all my life, uh, I experience things uh, in the collaboration with Greek Hotel and, and the special curation of the excursions uh, that I had never experienced before. So I think we can offer really great things to people and inspire them to bring these things back and which creates more opportunity for Greek products ultimately to go to the shelves of uh, supermarkets in America and people to try these kind of products, you know, at home and in restaurants uh, and in their schools and other institutions. Stephanos, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that everyone will have the opportunity during our summer, uh, our friends in the United States, they are always welcome. And uh, definitely, we live here, uh, as uh, you said, in a, in a paradise. And um, of course, we invite everyone to this paradise. And we have 
you know, to find all these unique value points and uh, appoint them and, uh, let's say, uh, try to promote them in the right way, not promotion in advertisement way, but uh, in a way of experience. Uh, we are going to renew uh, our uh, meeting on, on November. Thank you very much. Uh, we will keep uh, all of our um, people that follow us uh, um, uh, informed uh, about the latest news. And uh, I need to give thank you very much uh, for your participation, Natasha and Stefano. Thank you very much. And uh, Dina. Uh, the floor is yours uh, in order to close this uh, webinar uh, before the summer time and be back uh, on, uh, on September. Uh, thank you, Dimitri. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was really insightful. And uh, I would uh, also like to thank uh, Natasha and uh, Professor Stefano. Uh, what they shared with us was really uh, useful and uh, insightful. Um, I, I kept that there are really trade opportunities between Greece and the state of Missouri in many levels. And also um, in the um, uh, F&B sector, uh, where I noted that 73% of US consumers are open to Greek food. I think that this is a very, very interesting insight for all our Greek companies operating the F&B sector. And uh, we welcome the, the initiative of the Center for Excellence um, in Crete. Uh, thank you very much and thank you all for attending us. Uh, the webinars presentations are going to be uploaded to our site. And thank you for your time and have a nice evening.